Where do babies come from? Well, we've already explored how the female reproductive system contributes to making babies. In this video, we're going to focus on the male reproductive system. Let's start by reviewing one of the main functions of the reproductive system, which is to make sex cells. But how are sex cells different from other cells in your body? Well, most cells in your body are somatic cells, and they have 100% of the DNA, the full set of genetic information. And this is symbolized by 2N. In contrast, sex cells, or gametes, have only half of the genetic information, which is symbolized by N. So the job of the female reproductive system, or one of the jobs, is to make eggs during the process of oogenesis. Likewise, the male reproductive system produces sperm during the process of spermatogenesis. Let's take a look at how the male reproductive system accomplishes this task. Here are the basic structures in the male reproductive system. Just to orient you, here is the urinary bladder, part of the excretory system. So to start, here we have the testes. Next to the testes is the epididymis. The epididymis connects to a long tube called the vas deferens. The vas deferens winds around the bladder and connects to the other vas deferens in a tube called the urethra. The urethra is found within the penis. There are also three important glands, the seminal vesicle, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral gland. Finally, the scrotum is surrounding the testes. Now let's look at these structures from a side view and explore their function. Here are the testes. Their job is to make sperm through the process of spermatogenesis, and they also make testosterone. Now, the testes are surrounded by a sac called the scrotum. The job of the scrotum is to keep the sperm cool. Spermatogenesis happens optimally at a slightly lower temperature than the rest of the body. Once the sperm have been produced, they move into the epididymis, and they're stored there as they develop and fully mature. Once they're mature, they move into the vas deferens, which transports them away from the testes. Now, as the sperm are moving through the vas deferens, the seminal vesicle, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral gland are all, all going to secrete fluids that make up semen. And these fluids are basic or alkaline to counteract the acidity of the vagina, and there's also some sugar secreted to provide energy for the sperm during their journey. So the sperm within the semen keep moving through the urethra, and it's the job of the penis uh, during ejaculation to deposit the semen into the female's vagina. So let's continue the sperm's journey. The sperm within the semen are deposited here in the vagina, and then they travel through the narrow cervix, through the uterus, and then up to the oviduct where maybe, maybe not, the egg is waiting. And that is where fertilization would occur. Now, millions and millions of sperm are released during each ejaculation, but only one sperm, if any, will be successful in fertilizing the egg. To understand how only one can accomplish the task, we need to take a look at the structure of the sperm. So the sperm is broken up into three basic parts. There's the head, which contains the nucleus with DNA, but then there's also an acrosome. The acrosome contains enzymes. The next section is the middle piece, and the middle piece is full of mitochondria because mitochondria convert sugar into usable energy ATP, which the sperm needs to swim. And speaking of swimming, the last part of the sperm is the tail or flagella. Now, if the sperm makes it up into the oviduct, and if there's an egg cell waiting, here's what might happen. Note, as we're zooming in on the egg cell, that the egg cell, like all cells, has a plasma membrane, and that plasma membrane has receptor proteins. But there's also a jelly coat surrounding the egg cell. So the first thing that a sperm needs to do is squeeze through some of the cells here that are left over from the ovaries follicle. Once it squeezes through, it's going to release enzymes from the acrosome to digest the jelly coat. Once that occurs, 
the proteins on the sperm's head will bind the receptors on the egg cell. And here's an important example of a prezygotic mating ba barrier. The proteins on sperm of different species will not match the receptors on the egg cell of a different species. So if the sperm head is able to bind the receptor protein molecules, uh, the plasma membrane of the sperm and the egg will fuse. At this point, the egg undergoes lockdown. So the sperm nucleus is going to enter into the egg cell. Note that the midpiece and the tail or flagella do not enter. They are left outside. And at this point, a fertilization envelope is going to form around the egg. And this will prevent any other sperm from binding and fusing with the egg. Now that the sperm nucleus is inside the egg cell, the sperm nucleus and the egg nucleus are going to fuse together. And remember that the sperm and the egg are only carrying half of the genetic information, N and N. But when they fuse together, N plus N gives us 2N. So we now have a zygote with the full set of genetic information. And here's why fertilization is so important. It restores that full set of genetic info. And that concludes our exploration of how the male reproductive system contributes to the production of babies.